So I'd like to introduce our new flagship Hotbox 130 reactive attenuator. This is going to replace the Hotbox 125i, which we've sold very successfully for a number of years, and it's going to add a few new improvements that a lot of people have asked for and address a couple of the small nuisances on it. It is going to be a more expensive unit, but again, it is our flagship and it offers features you won't find anywhere else. So the first big change is we've done away with the toggle switches on the front. Now, I really like the toggle switches on the previous ones because they're robust and they're cost effective, but they're not obvious how to use them, flicking them in sequence. They do look really cool, but it's a little bit finicky to use, whereas the rotaries are much more intuitive. Now, I've not used rotaries before because the vast majority available out there are underpowered. And a lot of manufacturers use them even so, and they say, well, we'll get away with it. And I don't like that. They're too flimsy. They're not good enough for a high power amplifier. Now, eventually I found these made by CK, and these can handle several hundred watts, which is a really high level for a rotary. Toggles handle very high power routinely, but rotary is usually very low designed for audio switching. So these are brilliant. They are, however, very expensive. The two rotaries on here come to more than 15 quid just as parts. That, that's actually really huge. A good toggle is about two pounds. So we're looking at a big increase. So again, the price is going up, but hopefully you'll agree with me that the improvement in functionality along with the absolute top-notch quality is worth it. So the improvement in functionality means that because we're rotaries, we can have more steps than the toggles and more intuitively. So instead of the old venue, studio, etc. modes, we've got a much more traditional dB, minus four, minus eight, minus 12, and fine. In fine mode, it enables the fine control, which goes from about minus 16 dB down to absolute silence. Now I've kept one toggle, which I think is important, for bypass. So obviously no matter which mode you're in, you don't have to rotate around. If you decide you just don't want to be in that mode, bypass and you're gone. No problem. Very, very simple. Um, that's, that's the first big change. I really like these switches. They're very nice feeling and like I say, very high powered, very reliable. So that's the first big change. The fine control is the same as the variable in the previous one. It's a very high powered wire wound in there. So that remains the same. The next big massive change, in addition to these much more even and sensible steps, is an additional inductive mode. Now, I've not merely added an extra mode, I've tweaked the tone section in this, I've tweaked how the inductor works, I've changed the reactive nature of it to make it uh, better sounded. Now, I thought the 125i was pretty good sounding already, so this is an incremental improvement. I've added a little more into the top end, there's a little more clarity, a little more openness due to the way the inductors are wound, and we've got this additional mode. So we've got the resistive mode like we had before. And again, instead of a three-way toggle, we've now got a four-way rotary, much easier to use. Resistive mode, which is very bright, lots of clarity. And a lot of people out there tell me they really like the resistive mode. Our Hotbox 120 is a pure resistive and they're our biggest seller. A lot of rock people like that clarity. Now, what you may or may not realize is that 70% of your reactive tone comes from the transformer in your amplifier. So even when you use a resistive attenuator, you're still getting a reactive response. If you measure that on the tone curve and you plot it, you'd be shocked to discover that it isn't flat like a hi-fi. A valve amp for guitar will never be flat like a hi-fi. Even in a resistive load, you're still getting that reactive response. But in the resistive mode, it's simply less reactive, so you get a lot more clarity. So that's why we keep it. It's also nice to be able to compare that resistive mode and hear what you're getting rather than just trusting the attenuators right. You can say, here's resistive and here are the other three modes. Now, what I've done with these is given them a color code. So rather than trying to use complicated numbers or describe curves, just things useless. It's difficult. We're musicians, not electronic engineers. We've simply got blue, green, and cream. Can you guess what they're like? I bet you can. So yeah, the blue mode is obviously a bit warmer than the resistive, like you'd expect, 
but it still retains a lot of upper high-end clarity. It allows a lot of the brightness through. It acts as if there was a lighter voice coil and a smaller magnet and less windings. So it's very responsive and bright. Well, it's not very bright, but it's brighter than the other modes. And it's, <clears throat> you get me, I'm tripping over my tongue. The green mode is nicely in the middle. It's a balance. It's again like having a slightly heavier magnet, it's like a heavier core, slightly more wine, it's a little bit warmer sounding. That's how you'll hear it. Feels a bit more dynamic, a bit more compressed, you know, like dun 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 there, like a certain traditional green thing that we all like. And the cream um, mode is the most reactive mode. We've got full on inductor whining, everything is engaged in this. And the inductors in these are massively overwound. Um, for you who don't know what an inductor is, an inductor is a coil of wire exactly like a voice coil in a speaker wrapped around a former that makes it act in that same way. So an inductor is a coil of wire like a speaker, but without the moving parts. And so maximum inductance mode gives you the warmest sound, the most sort of squishy, soft response transient and much more thicker sound. And I think this is, um, I think this is really the way forward. So yes, it's a little more expensive, but you have all these different tone modes, a very intuitive, simple system with four dB steps and four dB on, an, on a, a power amp is really quite a small step. So you've got a little bit quiet, a little bit quiet, a little bit quiet, and then variable. And again, four tone modes. We've still got on the back the exact same arrangement a bright red jack so you can't mistake where you plug your amp in and two outputs which can be used in parallel just like all our other hotbox attenuators the speaker load as long as you're not in bypass can actually be different to the amp so you need to match this to your amplifier so this is a 16 ohm so if you had this you'd want 16 ohm setting on your amp a 16 ohm hotbox and ideally 16 ohm speakers but if you put eight ohm in or four ohm in, the amp will still see 16 because this is doing all of the work as long as you're not in bypass, in which case, obviously it's doing no work and it's just going straight through, that's a bad idea. So it's a very, very simple, very versatile unit. Passive again, no active cooling. This does mean it can get hot with some extremely high powered amplifiers. Some high end marshals can get this very hot indeed. However, that's fine. It's built for it, just don't, you know, don't lick it or anything whilst it's working. Most amplifiers it'll only get lukewarm with, but I say it is it is possible. And it's, it's built to survive, but it's built again, same as all our previous models, custom wound coils, very high end resistors, very high end components throughout. Nothing in this is cheap, nothing, everything is overrated. And um, hopefully this becomes our definitive flagship kind of heirloom attenuator. It does everything, has everything. You know, this is, this is the one you buy once and you're done. Answer one other question at the end. Why don't we have a switchable version with four, eight and 16 ohms? For example, very good reason. Every single part in each of these attenuators is tuned to the ohms. So you have to change every part in an eight ohm attenuator to make one of our 16s. And we do that to make sure you get great tone on every single setting. Now, if we made a switchable eight to 16 ohm as every and this is how every other manufacturer do it does. All we have to do is jam like a resistor in there or something that could just like bump it up or short it down. And what we couldn't do is tune the reactive curve because you can't, you can't do that. So what you'd have is, and you get this with the switchable ones, say the eight tone setting would be brilliant and the 16 will sound thin and the four will sound muddy because you can't, you, you have to change every single part. If you're doing this right, and every other attenuator manufacturer will agree with me, this is not me speaking, if you're doing it right, you change every resistor, every inductor, every part, apart from obviously switches. So that's why we don't do a switchable unit, that's why you should buy the one that matches your amp. But as I've said, you can vary the speakers safely. So if in doubt, get one that will suit, if you've got more and more amps, suit all your amplifier outputs and don't worry too much about the speaker count. So yeah, there we go, I hope you like it. This is gonna be on sale uh, in a few weeks time, mid-October I'm expecting. We're just building the first batches of these and testing them. They're going to be 229 RRP, which is much dearer than our previous units, but it's still a good bit cheaper than the competition, as you well know. So, you know, please 
don't be afraid, our parts are top quality. I keep them down because I am very clever with my supplies and my engineering. And yeah, please um, yeah, have a look at that, more videos to come. I uh, hope you enjoyed this preview and I hope this is something that will interest a lot of you. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Good night.